What up my freaks, Ruinous Insight here with part 21 of my Total War Warhammer 3 Elspeth von Draken the Mortal Empires campaign. The game looks like a different game when you're looking at the, uh, when you're looking at the ship down it. But anyway, anyway, as we saw last time, we had the Imperial debut battle Sola. for our little, uh, Imperial State Troop Army, which was pretty fun, uh, especially considering it's got a bunch of units that we, uh, aren't using anywhere else. Got to love a variety in, well, in the game in general, but really any roster that will allow you for tons of variety. I think this is why Archeon's campaign has been, I think, the most successful uh, so far. At the very least, it uh, reached the engagement threshold up to episode 40, beating Lewin, which was all the way through 31. But anyway, uh, the amount of variety in the Warriors of Chaos is pretty crazy, and now with the Empire, especially with the addition of the new units and the outposts, uh, it's pretty dark up there as well so uh, lots of fun stuff to be had anyway uh, with the enemy Pioneer destroyer Rose sloppy Rose. crookshank destroyed you can I guess look for battles elsewhere but it's a new turn and there's a lot to do so we'll start at the top with Elspeth von Draken herself Lokir Felhart has moved up but his army is absolutely trash that said the last time we ran into one of these armies we also auto resolved it and I think just for fun we'll nuke down those uh, We'll nuke down those Dread Spears, why not? Besides, it's Lokir himself, so I'd like to see... Uh, uh, I'd like to see him in action just for a little bit before we bring him down with, uh, with the laser dragon breaths. Anyway, anyway, uh, away we go on this... Oh. Huh. huh. Anyway, uh, I'll get to in a bit. Go. Speak to me, whisper of myriad battles of old. They tell tales of our foes' weakness. Alrighty, here we go. If you're wondering what I was wondering uh, before the start of the battle there, I was wondering why uh, uh, Lokir was on a flying mount, but I guess I'm too used to uh, uh, to SFO. I just wanted the sea dragon, but anyway. Anyway, here we go. Uh, we actually have a pretty cool looking setup here with the uh, uh, with the sorts of hills available to us in the Cathian territories, and they do offer a little bit of elevation elevation, but it doesn't work as well as you might think with regards to artillery, and they're actually not able to fire as well uh, due to the other units blocking them. I thought it would work really nicely, especially with the uh, uh, sort of ranks combined, but at least it looks cool. Anyway, uh, probably won't matter all that much either way. Uh, Elspeth will uh, rush forward. She's going to cast a Spirit Leech on uh, Mr. Loke here and then try to lead him towards the rest of our army. And quite successfully, I might add, by the looks of it, as he gets hit with a few volleys, whether it be from cannons or regular fire from gunners or from the Hell Blasters, his, the damage is massive and he will quickly drop and fall from the sky. Down he goes, ooh, and a bloody end uh, for his mount, and soon to be a similarly bloody end for the rest of his forces, I imagine. Amethyst uh, Ironsides are now able to fire as well. And hi, it looks like our Outriders aren't able to fire in this particular case, or at least a lot of them aren't able to fire. Usually they are able to fire over the heads of other units, which is why I like to put them, when they're in a, a line like this, uh, put them behind our other units, but it looks like whatever the cause, the elevation, is preventing us from doing so. It also looks like the other hills are actually blocking shots from a lot of our other units, so the enemy has a little bit of an advantage in terms of going up the hill. See how uh, these guys aren't taking fire anymore. Okay, now they are, now that they've crested the hill. Um, but while they're moving up like this, it looks like they're blocked, which is great for the enemy. Also, I didn't realize it, but uh, the uh, there are amethyst iron sides, which does make sense, on top of the land ships, which is just pretty fantastic. I love seeing those amethyst bullets fly from the amethyst land ships as well. Definitely want to put a couple of Amethyst land ships into a Land Admiral Zinthler's army as well, just because. He doesn't need them, 
at all, but, you know, just so that he has all the variants. Anyway, looks like the enemy is moving in, still watching the pew pew come down from all of our iron sides, and it looks like a decent amount of the enemy will actually reach our lines uh, due to being blocked and protected by those hills. My bad on the setup, I suppose, but they're only dread spears, and they're going to have a very difficult time breaking through the armor of all of our amethyst iron sides. And there we go, it looks like that was all they had. A uh, uh, Still, a worthy showing of them, bravely running towards our lines and managing to actually get to them. Not managing to kill anything as I, I believe, but still good job. And look at the damage on the... Uh, uh, on the coming morn in the other Amethyst land ship and the kills they did pretty great. I guess towering up high like this is a very nice vantage point for the gunners here as well. Do you guys think you're hiding behind this tree? Because I think I think everyone can see you're there. Actually, this isn't too bad. <laughs> it's actually hidden fairly well from a very very far away, kind of like hiding tanks and uh, in a forest. Just throw some netting on that thing and eh, it might work. All right, there we go. That was, well, that was always going to be an easy fight, but uh, nonetheless a fun one, though I don't know how exactly it would have looked on the uh, on the replay. Hopefully it all worked out, as I didn't control the army really, and just watched watch them gun the enemy down. Uh, it was a little bit interesting to see the... Oh, huh, would you look at that? The, uh, the Ultima Ratio Imperatorum actually beat the other two, both the Sunmaker and the Purple Sunmaker, uh, this time around. Mm, good job to it. Uh, what I was going to say was the fact that the... Uh, uh, was the fact that the guns, the various uh, uh, cannon, the artillery, I should say, uh, didn't really do much, and neither did the Outriders. I was... I was trying to set them up so that they could all fire over each other, uh, but it looks like when the enemy got sufficiently close, because it wasn't really a hill, uh, it uh, was unable to work that way. So it was mostly the amethyst, uh, uh, the amethyst units that did the work, and quite a lot of work from the two land ships as well. Well, good for them. And the amethyst, amethyst iron sides, of course. Anyway, uh, we don't really need to heal here. It wasn't enough damage to be concerning. So we'll pardon those captives. And move on. All right, so what do we have here? Ooh, tiny little army here. Hmm, I wonder where you're going, Mr. Admiral Croch. Uh, what do we have? Banner of Swiftness. I guess we should knock this little army out. There's another army right there which could do something. The only annoying possibility about this is the fact that we wouldn't be able to go to Bridge of Heaven or Shilong. What do you have there? Ooh, hello. Wait, auto resolve this. Hopefully that didn't do too much damage. Eh, all right, fine, we'll heal up. Heal to full, Banner of Swiftness is just fine, and stay here. They have two stacks, another one completely full of Dread Spears, but with two stacks available and the support from a Black Ark threatening our artillery battery, that should make it a little bit more interesting for the next time Elspeth has to fight. Zintler, you've trapped this guy, mostly by virtue of him being an idiot and uh, sacking Dargoth, but now he's dead. And Tolzin is moving down here. Oh, don't tell me Bellacor is coming here. Oh, damn it, Bellacor. <laughs> oh, we keep responding him to him and the issue. Well, whatever. Whatever. If we have to destroy his army with Land Admiral Zindler, then we'll do so. It wasn't what I originally wanted. This better not kill our war wagons. Oh, you better not kill our war wagons game. Okay, they got hurt, but they're not dead, which means we can praise Sigmar. Damn, the auto resolve hates those war wagons. And we cannot reach the Black Pillar or Nagrar from here. Hmm. I suppose we could loop back around to Nagrar after the Black Light Tower. It's not like it's a super critical place to go. Hmm. Shield of Talos. Ah, you can hold on to it for now. Probably going to turn it into something else later on, but for now we're uh, we're probably pretty okay. We do still have to do a little bit of work with some of our items. I mean, our itemization is okay, but we have gotten a few new of the garbage items of the un of the uh, common variety. All right, and that other uh, that armor of silver steel. 
Saving the Armor of Destiny and the Beast Slayer for Boris Toddbringer. Oh, speaking of... Ah, why? We already checked last episode. Uh, we'll check next turn. Alright, either way, Zintler, I guess you're going to the Black Pillar. Why wouldn't you cross here? Are you telling me that it's faster to go this way? That seems odd. Huh. Well, if you say it's faster, I guess it's faster. You can channel and then start moving this way. We'll see how Bilikor does. If he attacks you with both armies, I would be uh, very happy, especially as it would be a crossing battle slash choke point battle by virtue of the presence of the river, at least I would imagine so. Anyway, let's keep moving. Andreas Meyer, you got a date with some pirates. And let's go fill cargo and hope that it gives us speed. Oh, wax sealed rations again. Damn it, that's twice now. <laughs> I mean, it's a little bit of extra income, but he's got eight, he's got 18 turns of this now. And go to the Sea Corpse next. Mm, who's next? Al next, Albrecht Hopped Anderson. I kind of failed with you in the sense that uh, this guy decided to run away rather than go for Conquata, but uh, well, what can you do? Uh, just stay here for now. And Deconstructor Zintler. I'm still inclined to say... Okay, well, let's, let's, let's quickly take uh, Slaver's Point first. I'm inclined to say we want to adjust this army slightly, especially if it wants to fight elite stacks and armored stacks, especially since it has no armor, anti-armor to speak of, Occupy. I think... I think we can keep it to two units of Stir River Patrol for the Suppress and then replace the other two. They They just don't... They don't do enough damage, even with all of the, uh, even with all of the stuff. Just because we're in the, well, we're in the start of the late game now, uh, around turn ninety, and we're encountering a lot of armored foes. And this army would have been amazing in the early game, but now it needs a little bit more oomph uh, to punch through enemies that are armored. Otherwise, the entire army does no armor-piercing damage, with the exception of the single Templehof Luminarch. So, what we're gonna do is get rid of you two. And we're going to replace you with a couple of Emperor's Wrath steam tanks. Uh, why Emperor's Wraths? Because they still do sort of fire damage. And also because we had two of them available and it kind of bothers me. Alright, so we'll do that. Uh, they also do the burnt application, so that kind of makes sense. And they do fire damage via the uh, emergency vent. Causes fire damage. Their missile strength isn't fire, but if they are close to a Deconstructor Zintler, and they will be acting as part of the uh, main line, they will do fire damage by virtue of that. Now... And that will provide us a little bit of armor piercing. Hopefully it's enough, and if not, we could always get rid of two of the units of the Blazing Sun and replace them with, I don't know, something else that does fire damage, but in range. I, I really, really think they, they should up the uh, allied unit count to... Uh, to six at least, just so that you can get more units. But anyway, this should be a little bit better. Not that the army struggled against Bellicor, mind you, it's just that, uh, well, sort of predicting uh, what would happen if it ran into an army that was uh, sufficiently heavily armored. Anyway, you, sir, oh, you're still damaged, aren't you? Uh, this all counts as Chaos Wastes. Alright, go into Channeling Stance, because you have no mana, and then sit right, right, wait, right here. You can heal up in Tribe Slaughter, channel a little bit, because this is hilarious, and try to get to this guy before he takes all of uh, uh, all of Boris's territories. I mean, granted, Boris didn't put in much work, but you know. Ah, uh, anyway, anyway, Helmut Feuerbach, you and your new army. Oh, Scarby ran away. I was hoping he'd go for Karaga Rud. Uh, will you give us? Okay, we got military access, which means we're good. Heading on to fight Scarby then. Go into encamp, I guess. So, oh, actually, go into channeling. You need to channel. Everybody's out of mana, I guess. And we'll head to the Granite Massive where... Oh, I was expecting Scarby. Where'd he go? I doubt that he lost because there's no damage to these units. He might have gone March Stance and gone down to Resetra. He's got two territories, so he has to be down there. And I don't think he's dead because there's no army here to kill him. He just saw us and then ran away. With good reason, mind you, but uh, still ran away. Uh, Boris von Sighofen. I guess we're heading to Tav Gorgoth with the uh, Flagellants. Alright, makes sense to me. Let us get impassioned for you, sir. And what do we go for our Amber Wizard? 
Another point in Flock of Doom, maybe, to annoy the enemy. You are still not on your Pegasus or your Imperial Griffin. The base form... Okay, we're already able to overcast it. Good. And just had to make sure. Mm, I don't care for the Amber Spear. I do care for Pans and Penetrable Pelt, and the cost reduction would be quite helpful for the Flagellants. Yeah, let's go for the Pans. Let's face it, the Flock of Doom isn't going to do too much damage to Ogre Bulls anyway, so... All right, now this is a siege battle, which will probably be bugged. I will try to do... It'll be bugged because, well, probably, but anyway, I'll try to do it via cinematic, but if it doesn't work, we'll do the usual thing and do it manually. Let's give it a try. Alright, for the Empire indeed, to the end of the world, this is our Doom army after all, and it, if it just feels appropriate for the Flagellants to be the ones to assault the uh, uh, Chaos Dwarf territory. Granted, held by Ogres at the current time, but aren't the battle maps, the siege maps of the Chaos Dwarfs just fan freaking tastic I think they're probably the uh, uh, the most, the coolest looking cinematic ones, and uh, we definitely want some Doom themes uh, going when we're, uh, when we're in these places, don't we? You gotta love the... Uh, the absolute fantastic work the devs put in to the uh, uh, to the Chaos Dwarf Sieges. Anyway, I'm getting distracted, completely distracted, because I love the map so much. Here we go. This will be the debut battle for the Knights of the Everlasting Light, as well as the Piles of Flagellants. Uh, like the uh, glowing uh, lances that they've got, but we've brought them because they have that lovely blinding radiance aura. Although we do want a, a unit of, uh, or a single Luminarch in this army eventually, for for now, hopefully we can deal with what we've got. Of course, the Arch Lector will lead, and we're actually uh, moving towards the enemy lines in uh, slow walk, not running, while our uh, uh, while our siege towers attempt to talk with the walls. Alright, and besides, we gotta keep our war drums near, and here's the reason why we got war drums. Look at these. Flagellants up to 49 armor, and due to the uh, armor increase from, I forget what it was called, the Bastion of the Great Cities, plus 24, plus the other auras and whatnot we get from this. Disdain of the Dragon Emperor is also giving us additional melee attack, and the flagellants are up to 72 when in full view of the uh, buffing auras, and that's without considering the debuffs offered by the various uh, by the various auras uh, from everybody here it's pretty neat it's pretty neat I'm excited to see how this army functions but for now we've got a wall to try to take slowly but surely it looks like our tatter souls will just barely well maybe not barely but 40% uh, damage or 40% HP remaining rather on the tower but they will be able to reach it and I do like the Imperial Towers. They're classic, but they're a little nicer than the Bretonian Towers. Got all those uh, Imperial motifs on them. Anyway, here come uh, the Flagellants, of course, uh, against uh, Noblars. This should be very much uh, to our advantage. But it looks like the Nobblers don't actually want to fight. These are Nobbler Trappers as well, so it does kind of make sense, as they would get ripped apart and with great ease by the Flagellants. Now, the idea here is uh, the sieges are broken, and we know this. And part of what's broken about them is the gates. So what we're going to try to do is not break through the gate, which causes desyncs, or at least is part of a big issue with the desyncs. Instead, we're going to keep sending flagellants up the towers until they have sufficient numbers up here and can try to capture the gate instead. That's the idea anyway. And ooh, got a drill in like a temple looking thing. I gotta love the Chaos Dwarfs. It's just like a holy drill not going anywhere. And this thing's spinning up here. All right, just taking a just taking a quick look around the map while the uh, flagellants get into position. In fact, speaking of getting into position, speed yourselves up a little bit and then come on down and join the fray. 
Looks like like some nobblers. Uh, my cat. I don't know why there are so few up here. I think some of them tried to move back up the uh, wall. Yeah, looks like some of them tried to go back up the wall, but. Uh, huh. Probably not the best idea on their part, but that's all right. But this was a fantastic move by the AI. I didn't foresee this at all. They exploded their own wall, doing heavy damage to two. This, the Tatter Souls are basically destroyed. Uh, glad we didn't put any heroes up there or they would have instantly died. Definitely have to watch out for that particular maneuver. But anyway, two of our units of flagellants are pretty much destroyed and we'll have to uh, route out of there. Well, not route, they're unbreakable, but uh, we'll have to get themselves the heck out of there while we send in fresh flagellants full of, uh, full of daggers as they are and to fight those nobblers or specifically to hold ground while we try to capture the gate regardless of the presence of the nobblers and regardless of how many hits they take from the enemy range and the enemy towers and just gotta get towards that gate and by the looks of it we've nearly captured the gatehouse which will allow our zotes and our knights of the everlasting night light rather and our giant piles of heroes uh, to move in as well there we go here come the heroes the arch lector leads is is uh, two uh, warrior priests and two empire captains. None of them have really the levels needed as yet in this army to provide the uh, great buffs that they will eventually. But we'll get there. And it looks like as soon as we break through the gate, the ogres move to meet us, but the zotes tower over them and will hopefully rip them apart with decent ease. We've also managed to drop a few spells. There was a, a barricade here, but a couple of searing dooms made sure that said barricade was gone. I think one minor issue with this particular army is going to be the fact that since we're aura stacking here, um, both of the buff and debuff variety, there's going to be a lot of these effects here. Uh, there'll be a little bit more of an issue when we're sort of in a blob like this. A little bit less of an issue when we're not. And I'm sure, well, this army is just getting started. It just arrived in the Darklands and, well, maybe not just arrived, but uh, recently arrived in the Darklands. And it's got plenty of battles against the forces here. Grimgor's in basically fine shape and Goldtooth are as well. Neither one has taken any hits from our factions as yet. And I do say factions as uh, uh, I'm including our allies in that. And these guys will be fighting all of them. We may even have to send another army down here just because, uh, well, I'm not 100% sure this army will be sufficient to go in every direction. And of course we can eventually force our allies to declare war upon the enemy. Anyway, we are still attempting to make our way through. The enemy moved some iron guts into the fray and a pretty good move. The flagellants don't have and our flagellants will not have enough armor piercing to easily be able to break through the iron guts. And neither will the Knights of the Everlasting Light. They are merely Empire Knights after all the basic... Uh, well, they're not basic because they're the special... They're a special unit of Empire Knights, but Empire Knights are generally fairly weak regardless of which variant it is. And they're gonna have trouble with the Iron Guts. Fortunately, we do have these Zotes here. Weapon Strength 122, plenty of armor piercing, magical damage, and dampen on them. Plus, all of our various auras uh, will give them plenty of buffs as well. And yeah, look at all those auras on the side. And all the debuff auras on the enemy as well. White Cloak of Ulrich, minus eight. And... well, yeah. How much melee attack are we? I just want to see. I'm actually curious about this now. So, minus eight melee attack. Yeah, they're down to 13 melee attack. Despite this, despite no active spells on them. So, Blinding Radiance, White Cloak of Ulrich, Glittering Scales, plus a little bit of extra weapon damage reduction from the Warrior Bane. That's quite lovely. And we got poison on them as well from somebody who has cunning in the main line. I like it. We can see, or we can try to stack a few more auras in here later. And ooh, now that the uh, Knights of the Everlasting Light are a little bit closer, their lances are glowing and providing a little bit of vision up in the front line. That's fantastic. I wasn't expecting this. It was quite dark until now, but we've got a lot of glowing weapons on the uh, uh, on our knights and on our warrior priests. The ogres are still holding, lit up by our weapons out of the dark. 
And it looks like, well, everything's getting in each other's way. But yeah, we got a lot of big units moving in sort of a blob. And it is usually difficult for them to uh, uh, actually start hitting each other when this happens. But that's all right. We're going to peel away one of our units of Knights of the Everlasting Light. And we've got more units of Flagellants moving into the city. And we're going to send them around to try to fight some additional units here while the blob tries to work out this whole situation that we've got. And in fact, we're going to try to ignore some of the units that are holding back the blob and move a little bit more forward into the Nobblers and Ogre Bulls. And continue fighting best we can. Plus, the more enemy blobs up, the more chances we have to drop some nice spells and down upon the enemy. As we do have two casters, not a lot of mana, mind you, but uh, certainly enough for the occasional Searing Doom and uh, Gehenna's Golden Hounds and Block of Doom to some degree. Speaking of, there's the Block of Doom coming down upon the enemy, and it does look like it hits quite a bit. I'm actually quite curious here. Uh, where is our Amber Wizard? There you are. 9.2k eh, damage. I think this is his third, I want to say, Flock of Doom, so it's certainly something. Out here, our Flagellants are moving in, and we're going to charge the Ever... the Ever Knights? Uh, the Knights of the Everlasting Light. Maybe I should name them Ever Knights. Into some Nobblers. There we go. Lance is down, and move on through. There we go. Unfortunately, not enough speed or not enough mass to be able to fully charge and we're going to have to turn right back around to start hitting those Ogre Bulls. Now, this will distract the Ogre Bulls, the regular ones of which don't have as much armor piercing as they'd like, and we will be able to move our much more fragile Flagellants to hit the enemy Ogre Bulls in the back while the Knights of the Everlasting Knight Light ta tank them. Ah, Knights of the Everlasting Night would be a good uh, Black Knights or generally Vampire Counts units variant, wouldn't it? Now, anyway, these guys have taken a little bit of damage here, dropping down to 50% HP. Unfortunately, we don't have the Zotes close enough to offer them flesh to stone or any protection from our mages. But fortunately, over on this side of the map, we have nearly made it through the piles of ogres blocking us. And we can uh, get a little bit of help from our mages as the Searing Doom drops down into the midst of the Ogre Bulls and the Ogre Bulls are fragile enough for the Searing Dooms to be a concern. Hmm. Also, next time I play Ogres, I gotta make sure to build some War Drums. Damn, so many 9 melee attack on those War Drums. So many buffs. Uh, yeah, was that what I was saying was, gotta try to combine War Drums with Ogres, as the Ogre Bulls, with their relatively low armor, would probably be helped quite a bit by the War Drums. Though that said, the War Drums are very slow and the Ogres are quick, so there is that to consider as well. And ooh, we got fuel depots and stuff over here. Or silos, or whatever. Uh, fuel storage thing is. Somebody that make good word say word. Anyway, uh... <laughs> I'm still very, uh, very entertained by this map. Fantastic. Fantastic map and a lovely little fight, and surprisingly, the cinematic more or less worked. I guess uh, the... Uh, I guess it was the right move. Ooh, I like the chaos symbol in the, uh, in the lava where we're here. So much to take a look at on these maps. Honestly, it's just a shame that you don't end up fighting through cities like there's so much work put into these maps but you the battle is usually over long long before you ever enter the city proper yeah anyway wait what are these like some kind of giant smokestacks or perhaps they're just holding braziers i think they're smokestacks of some kind but yeah lovely fight All right, nice little siege. Hopefully it, uh, it worked, but sieges tend to be super broken, so even if it didn't, I mean, it worked one way or the other. Uh, at the end of the day, we took a relatively little losses, and the flagellants, when I played it, got damaged by virtue of being on top of the wall, and the AI actually uh, causing a breach in the wall while they were on top of it. I was really not expecting that, but uh, a nice move by the AI there. Anyway, uh, we will sack the place because we sieged for a turn free cash is free cash and another student as well very nice and then we'll occupy you ain't no tyrant. 
And yes, yeah, back to tier one, but we will transfer it over to Ungram. Oh no, I was going to send you to kill off the Tower of Gorgoth camp, but now it looks like Ungram is going to probably reach it first. Ah. Wanted that free XP, but oh well, what are you gonna do? Uh, anyway, let's continue. Anybody else need to move? Carl, yes indeed you do. Go after Shakara. Get Shakara. Her ships don't lie. Alright, and it looks like we're good. That's not worth fighting. I uh, had to consider it for a moment, but yeah, that's not worth fighting. And we will heal up because of the presence of the other army. Now, hopefully, we can still go into March Stance and then land at the Isle of Wights. Perfect. This means, Talzin, where are you gonna go now, sir? Ooh, another Lichbone Pennant. Very nice. Uh, either you attack Carl, in which case you die, or you attack Conquata, in which case you die, or you try to go out to sea to run, in which case you die, because you can't go that far. <laughs> uh, poor Talzin. Alright, next up. Ooh, ooh, I had an idea. Uh, the only thing we're missing to complete the... Final, the long victory objective is to control the entirety of the Empire. Now, we want to confederate Minden Land, but there's no guarantee that we will be able to do so right now. So, we pay them 2,000 gold, and then we do this, putting them into military alliance and thus giving, getting... Huh? Okay, wait, does it does the turn have to end? Okay, oh, yeah. that was supposed to... Yeah, everything. Everything. We have everything. Okay, wait, I think we need to maybe move an army or something, and then that'll then it'll activate. Somebody move. Somebody do something. Yo, move. Okay, that did nothing as well. Damn it, I guess the turn has to end. <laughs> I got excited about it, too. Oh, well. Uh, also, we should probably mill through some heroes, specifically engineer heroes, as we will want additional ones. You in, and then out. Good. All right, and I don't believe we want to mill through anybody else. I did want to build an all gunnery arm. You know what? Get the lose the extra padding one as well. I did want to build an all gunnery army. Here's the thing, and build it right here. War with Clan Angrand is inevitable. Now that they've declared or they've broken our agreements, they are now really disliked by everybody. In fact, if we take a look at even Karazakarak, it's moving down to minus 28 between them and Clan Angren just by virtue of breaking that treaty with us. And, well, frankly, dwarfs breaking a treaty is also already kind of, uh, kind of iffy. Their oaths mean nothing, and that's why, uh, and that's why perhaps Karazakarak would be willing to see them go. As long as their territory is returned to the dwarves, they certainly would. And how's Karakurn looking? Well, they don't like our friendliness with the wood elves, but uh, yeah. The war with these guys are inevitable and we'll need another army down here, plus presumably have Elspeth, uh, Elspeth teleport down as well. So, we gotta prep for that. Anyway, I do believe that was all that we had to do this turn, unless I'm mistaken. We got a little bit of cash remaining, but we can spend it uh, next turn, and just not to waste our time. Good, good, everything is good, at least I hope it is, because I'm ending the turn. Skip, skip, skip. Damage building? Where? Tower of Gorgoth, oh, yeah, don't care, skip. Hero not moved, commandment available, ah. Uh, where is it? Alright, car on car, well, this is all being traded as well, so, you know, don't even bother collecting the... Uh, you know what, you could collect the income for a turn. Uh, go to Council of Burgomeisters, it really does not matter what we pick here. Yeah, whatever. We really don't even need the commandment tower, all right? Outposts available, we'll skip those. We've got materials at sea and we should put those to use. All right, while the turn is ending, I don't remember if I forgot this or not at the start of the episode, but once again, it looks like we did manage just barely to reach the engagement threshold, so we're still going for the hour long, and the offer still stands at 250 likes and 40 comments for the next episode to be the hour. Hmm. 8,000 gold for peace treaty, eh? It made me consider it very briefly, but we came here for a reason, and the reason was this. Ooh, I like how they offered the peace treaty first, and then they attacked us right after. Really appreciate that game. Away we go. Magics I bring from the shores of death. 
You should fear me, my friends, but not half as much as the enemy will. All righty, here we go. Huh, I noticed that the uh, regular, uh, you know, the regular rocket batteries arced much lower than the, uh, uh, huh, than the purple one did. I wonder why. Could be a coincidence. Or it might not be. We'll have to pay attention to them in other, uh, in other battles. Anyway, Elspeth moves in just to drop a spirit leech on the enemy lord who gets gunned down very, very quickly by our gun lines. But this is only the beginning of the battle. And we gotta try to do as much damage to the first army as we can. There wasn't really a good position in this particular battle. We are right up on top of the hill, but the enemy reinforcements will come in from the side and the hill will protect them like they did last battle plus we've had to essentially divert several of our uh, uh, several of our units here the cannons two units of iron sides uh, the outriders uh, one of the engineers etc to this side of the map so that when the enemies arrive they're actually able to fire down upon them the enemy is also dropping black arc support uh, some nice kits into our units there and we'll definitely have to be concerned about it and I'm more or less not controlling the army as usual for this particular army, as this particular army will run the risk of desync if we uh, control it. Basically only control Elspeth and occasionally reposition units rather than direct control. Anyway, we've moved one of our land ships forward just to try to spot hidden enemy units so that they're not hidden and to have a nice vantage point up here as well as take shots from the enemy rather than allowing said enemies to close. There we go. Love these things firing in every direction. A master attempts to move in but gets gunned down by those iron sides, and it looks like the enemy reinforcements have arrived. We peeled away the coming morn, one of our land ships, as well as our outriders, so that we can hit the enemy as a new army from multiple sides. And it looks like more Black Ark support is coming. Uh, we got a little bit of grape shot coming down from our cannons as well, but they don't really have a particularly good angle for this. Tried to get the best angle that I could. But at the same time, I think I did position our units a little bit too close to each other due to the uh, danger of the Black Ark support. Not such a great thing. Anyway, looks like another... Ooh, this poor, poor lord. You're done. Alright, and I was uh, moving Elspeth in to help, but at least it won't be necessary against the Lord, and the enemy still has a fairly long way to travel towards our line. And here comes the land ship, mowing down the enemies as it uh, moves through with the bonus mass and dropping a landmine into the middle of the enemy formation. Elspeth trying to help out, dropping the occasional spell. And I believe that's a Death's Timekeeper. Nope, that's a Fate of Buna. And Death's Timekeeper actually has a little Timekeeper. Okay, I guess I didn't use it here, but I guess it doesn't really matter. Anyway, uh, enemy army continues attempting to make its way up the hill, but we've sent in our land ships now to distract the enemy together with Elspeth, and hopefully this will prevent them moving forward. The other army is not yet broken, or at least not quite broken, as they still attempt to make their way up the hill, but are failing to do so. Uh, pretty darn spectacularly. Damn. Uh, huh. One of the... Uh, I saw one of the spearmen get blown in half. What's the caliber on the... Uh, uh, I think this was just... Oh, maybe it was one of the... Uh, it was one of the Hellblaster volley guns that did that. Because I wouldn't expect uh, them to get that much damage from a single bullet. From an iron side or from a, a Hawkland long rifle. I guess I wouldn't imagine so. Well, anyway, fairly darn effective there, and it looks like the enemy army is done on this side of the map as well. Elspeth and her Carmine Dragon and the two land ships causing absolute havoc, as they do even without the Mortis Engine effect that they will eventually have. Oh, you gotta love these things. Damn, the land ships are fun. I just want to see them fire one more time before we end the battle. Come then, scum. I have 
Oh, come on. Ah, damn, the units moved off the, f the field. Oh, well. Oh, uh, well, not a big deal, eh? Very nice battle. We certainly did take some damage, and primarily, admittedly, and due to the, uh, uh, due to the Black Ark support, but, well, the enemy armies forced us into a position where we were blobbed and blobbed up enough, rather, to, uh, uh, for the enemy to actually use it. And, despite the desync, it looked pretty darn good. All right, a really fun little fight. The enemy was uh, actually given something of an advantage. And usually a hill means we have the advantage, but this Cathan terrain isn't uh, working quite as well for Elspeth's army uh, as I thought it might. Uh, certainly it's also partly the situations that we've gotten this army into, but uh, yeah, we need more flat ground for this army to uh, work to its uh, best ability. And also that Black Ark support really did hurt, damaging several of our artillery pieces. They were actually more hurt during the battle but fortunately it was crew dying rather than uh, artillery pieces themselves and we can heal up nearly to max now looks like some of the armies or a decent amount of one of them remains thoric ironbrow wants military access sorry thoric but for now that's not going to happen and valkia yeah you physically shouldn't be able to ask for peace maybe corn should like uh I mean, Korn should start at peace with everybody, well, well, everybody who they're at peace with, but once they've declared war, they shouldn't be able to take it back. Ever. Uh, I think that might be... might be appropriate. Also... Huh. Kislev. Yeah, go ahead, take some territories here. I would, uh, would love it. Bellacor, what the hell are you doing, man? <laughs> what is up with him today? Uh, he... Well, he's gonna die now, but uh, uh, he's just sort of running around, bouncing back. He went here, then he saw our army, then ran away. Then he tried to go down here, then saw another one of our armies, and then tried to run away again. <laughs> Oh, it's been it's been amusing. And hey, there we go. There's that long victory achieved that we've been waiting for. Could have actually done it probably several episodes ago as it's tied to uh, Imperial territory, but uh, still quite nice. Uh, Middenlands still does not want the Confed. I don't see how we could get them to Confed except by forcing them to join into a war, but I don't want to do that with the exception of possibly doing it via money. And right now, we should probably spend it on materials at sea instead. Just out of curiosity, though. How much to join the war against Shadow Legion? 21k. Yeah, they're too weak of a faction. We need you to join against a faction that's actually strong right now. Which would have to be Nagarond or Cult of Pleasure. Both of which would probably cost like 60k. Um, but it might, you put, it might put you over the top and allow us to join the Confed. There is another thing that we could potentially do. We could cancel the trade agreement. Wait, now we can. Can you do that? Hmm, wait, I want to I wanna see something. Are we trading with Geltr right now? Ah, yeah, damn, we are. I wanted to see whether re-upping the trade agreement would give us points and allow us to confederate, but I don't... Oh, no, wait, no, that works for vassalage. It doesn't work for confederation. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, we're not trading anymore, we become one faction. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Just ignore me, then. Fern Harvest died. I foresee great... And auto resolve. And one of our land ships is hurt. Not that it's. Oh, what the bloody hell did you do to the land ships? Uh, okay, that's not great. It looks like the auto resolve considers them to be the same thing as war wagons, does it? Uh, then I guess just in case it's just as buggy as the war wagon thing is, we probably don't want to risk auto resolving this one, do we? A bit of a shame, but. All right, fine. I'm just going to I'm just going to max speed through this, and it's clearly necessary. And ooh, what I didn't check was whether we were still in range of the Dark Elf, uh, the Dark Elf Black Ark support. I don't know why I specified Dark Elf Black Ark because there are no other Black Arcs. But anyway. All right, and we've got a hill sort of on both sides. Okay, start deployment. Let's just let's just blob everybody up. Uh, 
Okay, you know what? We don't even actually have to really be all that far from the enemy because uh, they're not going to be able to do anything. They're certainly not going to be able to get to us, so uh, just blob everybody up and then get into it. Uh, go here. We can send you here. They can't escape or that they can't run, as I understand it either. You guys go near the artillery. Uh, turn the skirmish mode off of you. Elspeth, group one, start battle, max speed, go. You can start off with a spirit leech on the enemy lord. Slow it back down. Get your dragon breath on him. Speed it back up. Let's watch the dragon breath because it looks cool. <laughs> Every time we can. And let's see how much damage that did. Eh, it did some. Alright, I'll spit back to it. You can go to normal speed. Death's time keeper on you. Let's pop a, I don't know, fate of Biuna on you just because we can. And just keep flying around while the artillery does its work. Uh, do we want to do anything to the enemy range units or melee units now? Yeah, let's pop the uh, purple sun out there. Artillery should have most of the rest of this taken care of. And do this. And head back for the hero. Another spirit leech. And the battle should be ours back to max speed. And no, 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 no. I said to attack the hero. It's not a hero, or the lord, whatever. Whoa, hello, the enemy uh, unit of uh, shades is actually in range. It's cute, you guys, max speed, melee mode, and go after them. Uh, Elspeth, have you still not killed her? All right. Use Dark Walker to prevent additional damage, and I don't know, use the purple sun here. Speed it back up to max. I really didn't want to necessitate any control of this battle, and there we go. Uh, since this army was defeated last turn, we shouldn't, in theory, need to chase it down, but let's give it a few seconds at max speed, just in case. I don't think so, but who knows. Uh, do you have Death's Timekeeper again? I want to heal up a little bit. You know what? Go out here. Let's heal you to full via using this on... I don't know, anybody. It doesn't really matter. Alright, you guys go here. Elspeth, did you use it yet? Come on. Come on. There we go. And land ships. Well, we have no way to heal you, unfortunately. Get up to max. You are as healed up as you're liable to be. Get a few more spells out there. There we go. Completely necessary, I assure you. Pretty sure the army's gone, but who knows. I guess we'll find out, because this unit clearly escaped with enough units to survive. But uh, usually... I mean... I don't know what happens to reinforcing armies in that situation. The main army can't run anymore and will be destroyed by the second army, I'm not sure about. Man, we're really gonna need to heal those land ships. Uh, you can take the healing, which, oh, it doesn't affect them because they're single entity monsters. I wonder why, that, why they made that decision. Why does uh, healing affect everything but single entities? Kind of odd. Ah, you can't... Well, the army was destroyed, but you can't reach Nong Chang. You can, however, go into encamp stand so you can get a little bit of healing on those units. A free smuggler. Always a nice pickup. More trade income after all. Nice. Uh, you can't take anything, right? Baleful Hills and Shang Wu, neither one of them have a port. <laughs> well, sucks to be you. Uh, who's next? Land Admiral Zintler. Is this guy in range? I think he's not. I was wondering whether we go to Kawark or... Oh, wow. What the heck is this? I guess these were all newly taken by Valkia. Huh. Actually, if you could take one of these... Almost tempted to tell you to directly occupy the target. I can't quite tell where you're going, though. There must be an army here. Hmm. Malekith sort of, sort of running around. Uh, do we go for Kawark and then work our way southward? Or do we allow you to take the Palace of Ruin jump to... No, I think we'll take Kawark right now. Battle preparations, troops. I want to cross the river because it's kind of concerning. Uh, occupy because we can't loot and occupy. I guess the only option. And let's keep going. Fight for... Her. All right, we will move you to fight Bellicor in a bit. We've had, what, three or four battles already this episode, and the fifth one will... will wait until we do a little bit of admin. In a very battle-heavy episode. Not that that's a bad thing, mind you. But we do need some admin. It is a part of the game after all. Oh! Okay, I was gonna say Bellicor, but... Valkia is here herself. Huh. Carl... We should probably level you, but at the same time... Okay, she's gonna run, but I imagine she's not gonna run far enough. 
All right, now screw Bellacor. Carl's army hasn't fought enough, so this is the fight we're going to take. Not necessarily right now, as in in a in a few minutes, but uh, yeah, Reichsguard, you're rank six, nearly seven, so we can get taste of battle for you. Mm. I mean, it's decent. A little bit of charge bonus, which the Reichsguard have plenty of. And melee attack, eh? Artillery Master is a better trait by the looks of it, and the Great Swords are n probably not yet high enough level to uh, take advantage of, especially since we're going to be replacing those with Karo Birds. Uh, so yeah, fine. Test for battle first, other stuff second. Let's also level you, Mr. Wizard. You can have regrowth maxed out, because Karl may need it for fighting Valkia, let's face it. Shield of Faith, and you are still not an admired whatever. But that's fine for now. Blade Shield and... Ah, eh, Scarvet isn't really great on these guys. Even on their Pegasi, they only get 134 HP and they don't get the additional increased effective HP because they have no source of regeneration. I lied. In this army, they do. But you're gonna get Woundmaker. They do because of the Jade Wizard's presence. But anyway, Carl, stay there. We'll move everybody else, do the buildings, and then strike. Do you need to do anything? And I guess you could get some bonus, some levels in the Karobergs. Actually, speaking of, six more turns? Damn, it's gonna take a while. We got plenty of these guys available should we need them, and we basically can just churn out Emperor's Rats as needed. Uh, Deconstructor Zintler, head to Shrine of Laudriel. Ah, Lewin's chasing Malekith around, that's great for him. And Autoresolve and Occupy. Potion of Foolhardiness to turn into something. Okay, loot and Occupy. And I guess we'll just give this to... Uh, we'll just give this to Altharian. Together with Blacklight Tower. In fact, all of this. It's not like we're gonna... Ooh, don't even collect the income. Uh, we're at what? Okay, yeah, we can take a turn like this. I guess we could give it all up now. You'd still... He's an ally right now, right? Yeah, so he'd still heal up in his territory. Yeah, fine. Do this. Train him, trade him Shrine of Ladriel. We'll take his money, though. This is all he has? It's not much. But take it. Shrine of Ladriel for you. Uh, do we need him to declare war on anybody other than the Cult of Pleasure? No, I think he should continue helping them. Funnily enough, he's not at war with Nagaron, but that might be a good thing, because then Nagaron can't take his, uh, his territories. Yeah. Alright, that works. Uh, you can have Slaver's Point, Black Creek Spire, and Karond Kar. Just trying to remind myself. Oh man, these are worth so much, but... But we can't really get him to do anything useful, so whatever. Plus, he's the only one of the elves that's our military ally, isn't he? And wait, we're our only... we're his only military ally. Eh. Well, then screw all the other elven factions, you get all the stuff. Uh, propose uh, for Slaver's Point, Black Creek Spire... And hey, Karand Kar, the Slave Gate, all of this, uh, all of this should go to the Warden. He can actually make use of all the cages and whatnot present in uh, the uh, in the territories of Karand Kar. So, yeah, that works. All right, it's all it's almost loreful. Karand Kar, go. Lovely. Back to whatever it was we were doing in terms of not battling. You, sir. Is this Tamarkan? No, but he's got two armies here. Ooh. I wonder who moves first. Is it Boris or is it that guy? Uh, that's a question. If it's Boris... Hmm. Wow, Tamarkan can move far. I'm a little bit concerned, I will admit, of fighting two armies at once with this one army. Yes, the slow thing works quite nicely, but what it doesn't do is uh, function well against multiple armies, I bet. Mostly because there's only a limited number of units that you can slow. Nonetheless, I mean, can preserve Boris's life. Maybe nice. We'll see. And if it dies, well then it dies. We've already, we have to risk. You have to risk it all sometimes. Uh, hold the line for you, and then wait. No, no, no. Has anybody leveled? You're at rank seven. You two are at rank and nine, and you are at rank nine. So if we go for rally and we get sharpshooter, we could buff those guys up. The missile resistance isn't going to give them too much value, but uh, the other stuff probably is. 
Yeah, go for sharpshooter first artillery. Upgrades Too bad we don't have Michael. another point, but whatever. Uh, what do you guys have? Physical resistance and unbreakable. Versus snipe. Yeah, so... They really, really need to rework which hunters. A, give them a horse. B, give them better range. What's the purpose of having snipe when your range is so, so small that it doesn't really do anything? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, enemy wins of magic power reserve and figure loss reduction minus 33% against all chaos. Well, we are fighting chaos, so let's go strict obedience then. Guess it does make sense. Tools of judgment not yet available, and yeah, that's it. That's all. You, sir, same thing. Strict obedience. Ambush success chance, eh? Hmm. I'm not sure this army is really going to try to be ambushing things. Uh, exorcism, or do we push onward towards Barona's time warp? I'm inclined to say we're gonna need Fa's protection more, so let's get exorcism and Fa's protection. Still can't get star student either, so we'll hold off on that. What about you two? We have black powder, discipline, and mercurial shot. This buffs you up personally, but uh, wait, does it give you extra range? No, just accuracy and reload. I'm gonna say mercur mercurial shot just because... Well, we might actually get some use of it against multiple armies. If they get, you know, close enough to the engineers. Uh, helmet. Uh, oh, damn, what the heck? <laughs> all right, so now we have Scarby, Bilicor, and Valkia all available to fight. Uh, okay, well, the next episode, I guess, is going to have a lot more fights as well. Yo, kill, the, kill this camp. I'm just going to hope that the auto-resolve doesn't screw us. Yeah, it's fine. And heal up. It's not much, but it'll work. And then go into encamp. Heal up as best you can. And then head to the Sentinels. Another messenger, another pigeon plucker pendant, valet, ferryman, and lots of stuff. You can have the Tower of Gorgoth. As long as you give us money to build our buildings. We're giving you plenty of stuff, after all. And you're at war with the Legion of Asgore as well. Huh. I feel like we're giving a lot to Karak. Oh, well, you know what? That's fine. It's fair. We gave a lot to Karazakarak. Basically, the entire Badlands is only theirs because we did all the work. So, yeah. Ooh. Greasy is nearby as well with a full stack. I wonder if these guys can actually take a full stack of ogres. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, it'll certainly be a difficult fight. Anyway, uh, let's keep moving. Helmet, I already checked you. You're fighting Scarby at the start of next episode, or during next episode. Who are you? Ernst Kuldorf, oh, those are the heroes. Jamathius, yes, we need you, sir. You need to sail onward to join the fire army and lend them a little help. Engineers, a new engineer perhaps? Uh, discipline, ooh, they start at rank 20 now. Very nice, but I'd really like one with Hawkland scopes instead. Recruit you temporarily and then delete you. In fact, I'd like two with Hawkland scopes, because the army I'm envisioning will have maybe three engineers, or is that too many? I mean, if it was, okay, if it was dwarf engineers, yes, it is, three is great, it, but a human engineers are vastly inferior, so, as in, as heroes. And lawfully, so, yeah, anyway, uh, though the game hasn't always, you know, reflected that as... Well, up until the last patch, it's always felt like the Empire had superior uh, superior tech to the Dwarves. But now, with the Thunder Barges and stuff, we're pretty good. On the other hand, we got other fancy stuff in the Empire as well. Anyway, Valkia. We don't need the help of all of these units, but we will... ...allow them to exist. And have our army fight ya. Yeah. Alrighty, here we are, and this will be the debut for the uh, the volley gun variant of the steam tank as well. Oh, they say Carl Franz on them, and Fury of Null. Oh, you gotta love these things. Yeah, okay, now it's very appropriate that they're in his army. Uh, that We have the Emperor's Wrath steam tanks, and tanks that say Carl Franz on them. I was uh, hesitant, let's say, to put uh, too many steam... Well, I mean, we don't have too 
too many but uh, I was hesitant to put the steam tanks in with the uh, uh, with this army but I think uh, this kind of justifies it anyway we have the roses thorns Karoberg great swords and the other unit of Karoberg great swords to lead the regular and great swords forward as well as the tanks and the piles of Reichsguard of course the Reichsguard will wait in the background for their opportunity to strike and will be focused first on destroying the piles of enemy flesh hounds and war Hounds. In the meantime, Carl will head directly for Valkia in the hopes of getting a nice duel. She's going to activate her Demon Shield and the melee damage reflection that it offers, but unfortunately, Cowardly will call for aid as two Manticores move in to fight Carl together with Valkia at once, and that's probably much more than he can take. We're then going to help him out as well by offering him a regrowth and trying to keep him up as he's already lost half his HP, fighting all three units at once. In the meantime, the enemy army has moved in. Uh, looks like some Furies touched down upon one of the Hellblaster tanks, probably to try to prevent it from firing, which they did effectively, but, uh, well... That'll force them to get destroyed. The rest of the enemy units are moving in. Chaos Spawn working together with Forsaken in that classic combo. Though it looks like a regular spawn rather than the Coronate variety. An enemy giant moving around as well. We're trying to fire into its back with our steam tank with the volley gun. Um, but it will get to our other line or possibly to the other steam tank. Decent matchup for the giant as well. It's uh, pretty great at uh, knocking out single entities like this. Kind of what it's for. And going after the steam tank is the appropriate choice. Vlad, or not Vlad, Carl. Carl. I was just thinking of another true emperor. Uh, <laughs> Carl has to peel away from Valkia just because of those darn manticores and will touch down among his troops or and he will heal up. Over on the flanks we also have our Reichsguard working and they pretty much completed their work as the Chaos Warhounds and Flesh Hounds alike have little no to no chance against the uh, piles of knights. Now that they're done with those they are able to uh, move around and hopefully smash into the back lines of enemy Forsaken and Blood Letters and Chaos Spawn and whatever it is that they can find. There we go. And that classic hammer and anvil of great swords and Reichsguard will put the rest of the uh, force pretty much to rout. And the balance of power shifts to about 95% in our favor. Another Manticore. This one I believe was chasing our uh, our life wizard around. We'll get knocked out of the sky and Valkia will be together with the spawn, the last remaining unit on the field. And she has Demonic, so she will continue fighting until she is fully banished, but it looks like the damage will... Uh, will defeat her at last. With a little bit of help from Carl and Co. Ooh, and one last use of the Demon Shield. Probably a little bit more damage into our units of... Uh, uh, into our units of Great Swords. Very impressive, Valkia. Oh, and she's still fighting, actually. Just out of curiosity. 8.2k damage. I'm not sure whether I saw her use the Spear Slaupnir ability. And down she goes, and with that, the battle is ours. We don't have to chase the enemy down, but we will take the opportunity to heal our single entities up a little bit, because we want to set sail, hopefully next turn, or if we can't, then the turn after that. Alrighty, there we go. The fight itself was very much in our favor. Of course, we didn't uh, use or need to use the reinforcements, but uh, sadly, Valkyrie refused to duel Carl in a one-on-one, -on -one, getting two Feral Mandagoras uh, to help out. So we couldn't really quite tell who would have won the fight. I, I'm inclined to say that without significant... Uh, a significant investment in Carl's red line, uh, or yellow line rather, uh, Valkia probably would have won the fight. I would imagine so. She's a pretty strong lord after all. As for, ooh, another Banner of Eternal Flame, yes. Uh, not for you, sir, but good. And... okay, wait, we'll, we'll, I'll deal with the items afterwards. 
Ooh, another talisman of preservation. Very nice indeed. Though Carl has the silver seal. Anyway, as I was saying, since yes. Carl has... I mean, he does have some investment, but it's the wrong investments. Remember, the AI did this. We don't have Blade Shield, we don't have Blade Master, uh, we don't have Deadly Blade maxed out. Instead, we have the relatively useless Full Armor Plate, or, well, not, not useless, but comparatively. We needed the melee defense and melee attacks. That's much more to fight Valkia. Not to worry, though, we should be able to get those fairly quickly, as uh, Carl's a high level, and uh, he's doing this fairly well. Now... The tanks... wait, what did we get here? We got Taste for Battle. We could get Stand Your Ground, which will, funnily enough, give us the melee defense, but once again, or as usual, I prefer to level up the army, so we're gonna get Artillery Master to buff the tanks up. Uh, not all of them, mind you, but enough of them. And, wait, Strength of Hardship buffs Greatswords. Ah, damn. So, here, Honest Steel is Greatswords and Demigriffs, but here, Demigriffs are together with the rest of the cab. Alright, fair enough. Fair enough. Alright, well done, Carl. Now, you have two things to do. Thing the first is to take the Karabar Greatswords from this guy. Uh, get rid of your least leveled regular Greatswords. Like so. And then, I guess, well, we're going to need to help out here. Although, I guess now the question is, do we actually need to help here? Or can we freely move down here instead? I feel like that might be better, since... And you can hit to this sort of side of Nagaroth and or Nagarond and the Cult of Pleasure, and then we can do the same thing from this side with our state troop army, and then crush them, and give their territories to the elves and the Kislevites, as we've been doing. Look at all the territory we've given all these guys. But hey, it's uh, it's working fairly well for this campaign, so why not? Um, March stance. I guess we need to head back to the Isle of Wights. My orders are too in order to sail out. Actually, funnily enough, it might have been... Eh, whatever, too late now. Yes. Do you need to do anything else? I feel like we don't want to pay for you to be here, especially since we can get stuff in one turn. Just gotta make sure that we give the tradesman to somebody. So, delete all this, including the regiments of renown. Putting us up to 31k. Yeah, Ready. damn, that's a big difference. And then give the tradesman, let's say, to you. Uh, no. Oh. Oh, that's a servant, not a student. Damn, I got excited for nothing. Uh, tradesman can only go to Lord. Oh, we have two tradesmen. Uh, Alright, Carl. Okay, you are one of the few lords that had one. Of course you were. Alright, what about you? You don't have one. And you. You don't have one. Tollkeeper? Nah. <laughs> not where you are. You're certainly not going to make us more money. Oh, damn, you know what I should have checked? Ah... Uh, if anybody noticed it, what was the money before we got the plus 16% extra trade tariffs? Just uh, just curious as to how much money the extra that was giving us, or it was going to give us. But anyway, anyway, let's do building, building, and a little bit of admin. We have no more time for any more battles, unfortunately, simply because... Okay, we already fought five battles this episode, guys. This is enough. <laughs> it's enough. And, yeah, you're good with the upgrades. I... Yes, we can still upgrade the landed estate. We do want to max out the empowered ohm stones. And this place will be a lot easier to defend in, well, ten turns. Gonna take a while to get there, but we hold the territory, so might as well keep holding. Diamond hands. Anyway, Uzkalak, you are going to be traded away to our allies. I might do that between the episodes just to uh, not waste any more time. Dargoth. You will be given to these guys, to the Ursonites, and that's fine. Aquitaine, Bordelow, keep on keeping on. Town and farm and money. We'll probably want to build defenses here as well, just because... I mean, alright, it's not likely that anybody will ever attack the place, but why risk it, right? Anyway, keep building up those foundries and gunsmiths, but uh, ignore everything else, at least for now, as I think there may be better uses of our resources. Especially while we have materials at sea. Around the mountains, yes, Bill Bali. Definitely go to tier 4 for only 4,000. Very much worth our time. Erengrad, you can be ignored. Parts current. I mean, yeah, fine. Build the walls. Aberheim? Yeah, sure. Go for the tavern. It's not super expensive, or at least not expensive enough for us to be concerned with it. Uh, more gunsmiths, more research, faster research. Salzenmund, go to city state, tier 5. And I guess we'll build the wizard's campus here. Just because we can. Ooh, definitely the Tailor's Guild. We just gotta now make sure that we still have enough money to upgrade whatever other tier 5s may be here. Oh, damn. Yeah, just 
to keep track of this. Oslin needs upgrades. You definitely need upgrades. Hmm, wait. I'm gonna restart with Oslin in a second. I just want to see if there's any other tier 5s. I mean, yes, we could upgrade them next turn. And, oh, damn, I just realized I upgraded a tier 5 somewhere and forgot where. But we probably would have need to delete the... Uh, delete the farms. Mm. Here. Oh, this place didn't even have farms. Okay, well, good job, Ruinus. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know if I'm being sarcastic there or not. Somewhat actual good job, but not on purpose. So, yeah. Uh, tap room for you, sir. And I saw somewhere else that we might need clothiers. Hmm. Unless I thought I did. Maybe I didn't. All right, well, regardless, I believe now we're good. We'll have more money available this turn, and I think we'll want to use the th four turns. Wait, let's see if we can get this right. So, Clan Angrand broke our agreement, what, two turns ago, I want to say? Meaning we have eight turns until they declare war on us because the AI still generally abides by the 10 turn limit which means we need to recruit an army within those eight turns and then get it positioned here and get elspeth ready to uh, teleport to miragliano at the same time meaning we start recruiting within probably four turns so we're safe to use the money until then all right so that sounds good to me anyway folks with that i think we're out of time this episode's gonna take an insane amount of editing because of all the battles fought and i have no idea how what the actual time is anymore because well i never do when there's more than two battles in an episode uh otherwise next time we got bellacore we got scarbrand we got probably a lot more fun stuff on the menu as the uh, great battles are all over the place still in good time stay tuned for more elspeth don't forget to leave those likes and comments below especially to Threshold, all glory to the algorithm, and thanks for watching.